Hi there. Welcome to this little commissioning 101, where we're going to look into how you can structure your test overview on your commissioning projects. Let's get to it. The agenda for this little meeting here is a general introduction. And then I will go through some of the ways you can structure your overview. And then finally have a look at what I think is an efficient overview of your tests. So the requirements for management control test and documentation in construction is on the rise. And this development will persist without end. We're always getting new requirements from left and right all the time on our projects. We can often divide these requirements into the technical complexity, sustainability requirements, and then also the safety requirements. These requirements is hitting us and we need to verify and validate that they are fulfilled on our projects. And that is where our commissioning process comes in. So imagine having quality focused processes and a superior overview as your superpower on all your projects. And that regardless of the quality standards you need to meet. That is our test overview. So the ultimate test overview that gives you real time insights. It supports easy collaboration and responsibility. It's a customizable view and you can do progress reporting and overview. So this test overview here is an overview of all the testing, all the assets, all the equipment on your projects. It gives you the direct insight on what needs to be done and who is responsible for it. When you're going to structure this test overview, there are three ways to do it, probably more, but there are three main ways to do it. The first one is by verification of test type. So in this view here, you can then divide your asset into like main groups, mechanical check, then the assets, pre-functional check, then the assets and so on. The second way is by area room. So divided by building A, first floor, second floor, third floor, and so on. And then you can also subdivide it into the specific rooms, if you're like a critical room. The third one is by asset or system type. So the whole cooling system, and then all the tests beneath that, heating system, and so on. In the next couple of slides here, we're going to dive into the each individual overview or structure view here. So the first one, that will be by verification test type. You can see a screenshot from CX Planner here. This screenshot is from the test overview, where I have divided the, the assets into these main verification areas. The red area here circles in the mechanical complete can see at the top mechanical complete and then the systems beneath that. So I have expanded on mechanical complete and the heating system where we have the central heating distribution, palms and systems. This is a good way to like structure yeah, across the, the main test areas and then the, the systems or equipment beneath that. But there are some pros and some cons. Let's take a look at the pros first. Using this way to structure your view gives an easy way to track the progress of your testing. So when you use this, you can get like a percentage completion of all the mechanical complete checklists. And then when you go further to the next area, the pre-functional checks, you can also get like a full status report of all the pre-functional checks. So it gives you like a good view of progress from the current state of the project across these main verification areas. The second good part is that it follows like the normal way of structuring the overview. A lot in our industry knows this way of structuring the overview. So it also gives them, uh, people can recognize it when they see it. The drawbacks or the cons in this is that we have no, no way to view the progress of the full system. So imagine having this heating system. We have like three different checks beneath the heating in the mechanical complete, but we're also going to do some checks in the pre-functional check. And supposedly we also have like a, a system integration commissioning test area, also doing some checks there. So kind of get like a full overview of the heating system in one place. We need to like go first for the mechanical check and then the pre-functional and so on. 
it can also be like more complex to do like prerequisites and do some binding between them. I'm trying to move my icon here and see it. So if you're going to like bind the central heating distribution on the mechanical complete with the pre-functional, you have to do like some, some cross areas binding and prerequisites. It is absolutely possible, but it can well increase the, increase the complexity of the view. The second way to structure the view can be like by area or room. In this example here, as you can see in the in the in the red area, I have divided in a building A, then a first floor and a second floor. I expanded on the second floor where we can see we have a room B1 and a room B2 and so on. I have then also within room B added the specific tests or checks we need to uh, perform in this specific room. So you can either like divide it by these very detailed one by room or by building areas. By doing this by, by area, it, it gives us a, a direct insight to like, if you have some critical areas that need to be tested and reported on, if this was a hosp uh, hospital and this was a, a, a critical room, then we could get like the percentage completion and, and how far we are by testing this specific critical room. Often this view can also be integrated into the main time schedule. So if you have like a time schedule, which also goes by areas, uh, floors and so on, then our commissioning test view can be integrated into that one. The drawbacks is that it's a little harder to track when like the distribution systems are ready for test. If we have in this example, you can see that the bottom one in the room B2 is the ventilation check. Before we can do this check, we need to ensure that the distribution, like the ventilation system is ready to be uh, included in this check. So that can be a little harder to get the, the full overview of. Um, and then also special focus is needed on the test types. Is this like a mechanical check, a pre-functional check or system check? So you need to have in that in focus when you divide your structure like this. The third way to do it is by system asset or equipment. Within the red square here, you can see I've divided it into a ventilation system. And then I have the specific ventilation plant, A100. And for A100, I have four different checks which needs to be performed. The visual inspection, the mechanical complete, pre-functional, and then the commissioning test. In this view, I, I, I get like the progress and I can follow the status for each individual asset. Now I can get a like direct insight. When is ventilation A100 finished and completed totally? It also gives me a, a clear way to manage and work with my prerequisites and, and the dis uh, different disciplines. So the prerequisites, it's easy to bind, like you cannot start the mechanical complete before the visual inspection is done. You cannot start the pre-functional before the mechanical and so on. It's visually easy to see in this view here. It's also, easy to like divide this into the dis different disciplines. So now you can see how far is my ventilation area? How far is my cooling area? So it's another way to, to structure it. Uh, often gives good benefits when you don't have like thousand ventilation assets and, and you can look at it uh, in, in this way here. The cons could be missing a way to get a clear progress overview of the mechanical completion on your whole the uh, whole project. So the mechanical complete is now included within the specific system here. So I need to like look into the SIFT systems to see how far is my mechanical complete instead of getting like one specific overview of all the mechanical completion on the project. This here has more focus on the system level than the check of the, the mechanical or pre-functional uh, level. So that's also like something you have to decide on the project. When you're going to choose this structure, there are often like these four main areas you need to be, yeah, be very uh, focused on. The first one is the client's requirements. Does the client require you to structure your view in a special way or can you decide it yourself? The second one is to the integration with the project. 
commissioning is fantastic, but we are relying on the main construction project. So if the construction project does have a time schedule or way of working or planning, if we can integrate our view into their way of working, the commissioning process will be more integrated and that is beneficial for all of us. The third one is the scope number of systems that tests. If you have five tests in total, five assets, then I would divide it by system. If you have 5,000 tests, then I would choose one of the other ways. So it also depends on, on how, how many tests you need to perform. The fourth item is the size of the commissioning team. Do I need to perform and manage all of this by myself? Or do I have like my commissioning team I can rely on? So like my final advice here, that would be to manage your test structure in CX Planner. In CX Planner, you can manage all these views. So you decide, should it be divided by area or by system? We can support everything. We also have like an easy uh, generation from Excel spreadsheets. You can work in the Excel spreadsheets, then import them, and we will generate these lists and overview for you. You can also easily manage it from within the browser. So you can always do like editing and customize the view you need. And then an important one, we have a reporting feature, which can report and do all your status across these different views. So whether you're choosing by area or by system, we can do the reporting. So you can always deliver the specific uh, reporting to the client to, uh, to what they are requesting. And then bullet number four, dashboards and reports. I've included a little screenshot at the right here, showing one of our dashboards. When you keep your test structure within CX Planner, you can generate all these kind of dashboards, customize them, and then use that as your tracking overview. So the test overview is one thing, but you can combine it with charts, reporting, and a lot of other stuff within CX Planner. So if you're up for it, let me Take you to a, uh, let me give you a tour through CX Planner so I can show you how to structure your overview within CX Planner. Thank you for your time. See you to our next commissioning 101.